Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Maker Stories webinar series. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am or if this is your first time, my name is Maria Marquis here at CODA. I just love celebrating all of our makers, helping people develop new skills so that they can go and solve all of the business and life problems that they might have in CODA. And in general, I just like to think of myself as the cheerleader in chief. That's really my main job here at CODA. Um, so in Maker Stories, what we do is we sit down with one of our awesome CODA makers, talk about their journey with Coda, take a look at their doc and just talk about all of the things that went into it and learn a little bit more about some of the people who are behind the docs out there. Uh, now, lucky for all of you, I'm joined by one of my favorite makers, Victor Garcia. Um, I first heard about Victor in our Coda community, which I definitely recommend that everybody check out when they get a chance, um, hearing about his amazing work on his own business, Elada Salisteca. Uh, so, Victor, do you want to just share a little bit about who you are, um, Helada Salazteca, and kind of uh, your business? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, as Maria mentioned, my name is Victor Garcia. Um, I have a two-year-old baby, and my wife is due with our second baby boy. So, I got, yeah, we're, got we're getting ready. <laughs> we're, we're getting ready for that to happen. I, I, I enjoy spending time with them and my wife. Um, I like staying active. I really enjoy playing soccer. Um, one of the things that really, really drives me that kind of made me want to open, uh, open a business and be an entrepreneur is just kind of this knack that I have for, for wanting to make things better. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's something as simple as like your, I don't know, your lawn mowing route or you know, taking on like heavier projects to like improve a product or make it easier to to manufacture or, or you know whatnot. Um, and that creativity is kind of what uh, how I found Coda. So um, a couple years ago, my wife, you know, we had just had our first baby, and she wanted to to leave her job. And for every big decision that we've that we've made in the past uh, three years, I like filling out. Uh, What's, what's called like a fear fear setting exercise. Oh, cool. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the exercise that Tim Ferriss has. Um, so here I was with, you know, the book and reading, you know, how to fill it out because I had done it a couple of times um, in the past, but I just, I didn't know where they were. I think they might've been like in a piece of paper or an Excel yeah. doc and I couldn't find them. So here I was looking at the book again um, and I just thought, okay, there's, there's gotta be a way for me to, so I don't have to pull out six sheets of paper and, and fill out the fear setting exercise. So I just Googled, you know, fear setting um, template or fear setting um, doc and Al, he yeah. actually created, <laughs> yeah, he created a fear setting Coda doc where you basically just go in and the fear setting exercise is there. So all you've got to do is click on the steps, you know, four or five steps and it gives you your summary um and so that yeah that, that's how that's how i found coda it's just kind of in <laughs> yeah yeah um so al was was the, <laughs> the reason how you know why i found coda um but a little bit more about the about the business before talking about how we yeah. use coda so uh the name of the company is Elados Azteca, but We've been working in the past couple of months to rebrand and we're gonna change the name. Um, and the main reason is we want everybody to be able to connect with us. And what we've discovered is sometimes it's not super easy to pronounce if you don't speak fluent Spanish. Like it can be a challenge. Wow. So we just wanna make it easy for everybody to be able to connect with us. Um, so here in the next month or two, um, we're going to be rolling that out. Uh, so that's something that's really exciting Ooh, for us. Uh, nice. A little bit about what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So our goal is to bring a little piece of Mexico to our customers, to the U.S. Um, we're in Dallas, Fort Worth, um, and Waco, Texas. We have right now three brick and mortar locations, um, and we primarily serve handcrafted treats like paletas, ice cream, mangonadas. Um, that's, that's uh, I think, our core business. 
but we also you know bring Mexico to people. We have a party planning um, and catering service where we focus on Hispanic themed parties, and we basically provide everything except the main course for the events. Um, and then the final way that we do it is that we have uh, an online store, an e-commerce store, where we have a couple of handcrafted items, but we have a lot of very rare and difficult to find, like a traditional candies and chips and drinks. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, awesome. that's a little bit about me and the company, yeah. Yeah, and when was uh, El Arizal Azteca founded? So the company has been around for quite a long time. It's a family business. My parents were the ones that founded it in um, 90, 98. Mm -hmm. So they started the first location in, in, in Waco, Texas. Um, and from there, we've sort of, you know, started to slowly open up a second location and then a third. Um, and now we're working on the lease to nice. have a fourth. Yeah. So exciting. Also, I'm, every time I talk to you, I just get so hungry. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I could totally use a palette right now. That'd be so great. Um, also, just so everybody knows how to get in touch with us today, uh, we are going to be going through Victor's doc and really exploring how he thinks about hiring to grow this business, right? Because if you've ever been an entrepreneur, you know that your business is both an amazing thing that you absolutely love, but also you can't do it alone. In order for it to grow, you need to have the right people along with you, which can either make or break a situation. So as we go through today, we do have the chat field over on the right side of your screen. Feel free to use that at any point in time. Allison is sending us some love, which is great. Um, we also do have um, the ask a question button at the bottom of your screen. So if you've got a question for me about Coda or for Victor about how he thinks about running his business and how he implements Coda, uh, feel free to just put it in the ask a question area. That way it doesn't get lost. We make sure we can answer anything and everything that might be on your mind. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping there. So Victor, let's actually talk a little bit about um, your doc. And I'm actually gonna just put a link to it into the chat field so that everybody can see the doc that we're looking at. And if you wanna make a copy of it, you certainly can uh, to start to think about your own hiring processes. But do you wanna share a little bit about, you know, before you built this doc and before you built this idea of the A player hiring guidelines, like what were some of the problems in your business that you were trying to solve before documenting this process that you used? Yeah, the, the short answer is we were just really bad at hiring. We had people coming in um, and leaving. We had to fire people. Like it was, it was a challenge to yeah. to have somebody to have a good team player, a good mm -hmm. um, hire stay longer than than one year. So mm. this was kind of the cycle that that we were that we were in, sort of where we would bring somebody in and they would leave. So I thought my primary job was basically just to cover for people and basically, and, and, and at the time, I just thought, you know what, this is the business that I got into. Like, it's a high, high turnover business. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just thought this is how it works and there's no, <laughs> there's no answer. <laughs> but um, after, <laughs> after some time of going through that, yeah, so I was like, what have I, you know, kind of like, what have I done? Um, so after some time of going through that that, that stressful uh, um, cycle where I was, you know, as Maria mentioned, I was I was in the business. I was the business. I, if I wasn't there, things just wouldn't happen. Um, so we just thought there's just got to be, there's got to be a better way of doing things. Um, and, at, and we went through a period where we thought, you know, the answer is the training. If we have the best training it doesn't matter who we hire they're going to adjust they're going to they're going to be a superstar mm -hmm. no that didn't work so, so we're like, okay it's not maybe it's not the training right because the people that we're bringing in like we, we feel like this training is great but it's just not you know they they just don't really pay attention they're, they're, the will isn't there um and so we started reading um started reading books about yeah. anything really anything that made a business work um and so we got on this topic about hiring and so read some books about that um and the two books that really stood out were who so that's 
the name of the book is Who, the mm -hmm. Gay Player Guide. Um, and the Coda Doc is primarily distilling that book. That's that's the main book in the Coda Doc. Yeah. Um, and then the other one that really stood out that had some really valuable pieces of advice that really turned our company, um, that you know, we made a 180 turn was was mm -hmm. work. Um, and so these two books, yeah, are the ones that, that make this doc and they're the ones that they, they, they saved our company because, um, <laughs> yeah, there was, I mean, there was a lot of times, a lot of points where I thought I am, I'm going to have to get my resume ready because I, I can't do this much longer. Um, so that's the problem that we were trying to solve. And, and once I had those two books and I knew that the information, the information was in my head, then, then I knew, Hey, we, this is going to change our company. We need to put it. Um, it needs to be somewhere where everybody that interviews, um, that they get trained on this process, that they mm -hmm. that they know what our hiring philosophy is, because we didn't really have one. Um, yeah. So it's just how do we get everybody not only on board, but to know it. Um, and so mm -hmm. this code doc that we're going to be looking at is, is like this big resource that people can come in, look at, read about, learn about. Yeah. Because you know, uh, we really want people when they come in and they have an interview to know, hey, this is the most important thing mm -hmm. that you're doing. Um, right? The people that we allow in makes mm -hmm. or breaks. Yeah. You know, the one thing that I, I just love about what you said is, you know, kind of going back to what you said at the beginning, right? Of you have this creativity for wanting to just make things better. That's, that's your superpower. That's your thing that you're really good at. And instead of being in your business and going, oh my gosh, things are not working. I got to just give up. You decided, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to just do a bunch of research. I'm going to figure things out. And you like took that creativity, made it work. And then instead of just keeping it in your head, you're like, okay, in order to really solve this problem and really make things better, I need to document it so that all the stuff that's in my brain can be in everybody else's brains too, which I think is just kind of neat that it kind of came full circle there. So why don't we go ahead and open up your doc? Yeah, let's take a look and, and walk through yeah. it. Walk through your brain, if you will. <laughs> so if you want to share your screen. Okay. Also, just a reminder, everybody, you don't have to wait for me and Victor to stop talking. If you've got a question, there's no such thing as interruptions. Feel free, just uh, pop it into chat or that ask a question area. And also feel free to follow along in Victor's doc. I've got the line, uh, the link over there. Awesome, looks great, Victor. Okay. So walk us through your brain. <laughs> so, okay, as, as much as I would want to go through each and every single um, page, mm -hmm. we, got, we got to hit the highlights because it's just too much to go over in an hour. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> I will try to, to summarize what I think is the most important. And then of course, if there's any questions or if anybody wants to learn more or to go a little bit deeper into any of the sections or any of the topics, like just feel free to, to, to ask. Cool, sounds so, great. Yeah. So basically, I mean, this, this first line, the first quote, it's just it's just gold, right? The most important decisions that business people make are not what decisions, but who decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just saying, yeah, like it doesn't matter what your strategy is. It doesn't matter um, what product you sell. It doesn't matter, you know, who backs you or anything. The people that actually carry out the job are the ones that, like, those. Are are the most important decisions the decision who to hire who not to hire that's what mm -hmm. should keep you up at night that's what you have to hyper focus on yeah. um because it's really easy to get you know to, to put that aside or to say or you know to not give it the time that it requires mm -hmm. it's, it's really time consuming to to hire the right person and to interview the right person right. and to, to go through the whole process um but if you don't do it now, you have to pay for it later. Totally. Because you were saying, oh, you've got this high turnover. Maybe that's just the nature of the business. But we all know that turnover, isn't. it isn't just, 
oh, now we have to hire somebody. It's now we have to hire somebody. Now we have to train somebody. And the time it takes to get that person fully functional, you know, turnover costs so much more than, than we actually usually think about. So um, yeah, like getting the right people in the room, not only to make those good business decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, but the cost of finding another right person or finding the right person when you didn't initially. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So here's a little bit. So the main goal of the doc is to help hire A team players using the GH smart, uh, smart method. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go through that very briefly. So here are the two books um, that I highly recommend anybody who hires or anybody who has to make or anybody that interviews, anybody that, um, even if you don't, especially work rules, even if you don't hire anybody learning about and reading about um, people and how um, here uh, Google, the things that Google did to try to get their employees engaged and what, how they failed and the successes that they had, that's, that's a talent and that's a, that's a skill that's always going to, to help you regardless of what industry you're in, regardless of what profession, profession you're in, regardless of anything it's it's useful very very useful awesome adding those to my list right now boop, 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 boop. Okay. <laughs> so a little bit about us as i mentioned our, our goal is just you know it's it's to bring people a piece of mexico um this one right here i feel like is really important so this one again just goes back to saying hey this isn't just uh, a gut feeling it's not just something that you know there's research behind why picking the right person is the most successful thing. So um, in the book, they interviewed over 300 CEOs, um, billionaire CEOs, to find out exactly what makes a business successful. Mm -hmm. And as you can see right here, if you get the talent part wrong, the people part wrong. It's <laughs> you got half the equation wrong, <laughs> so you're gonna face you're gonna face rough waters. Um, and so you can see, yeah, you can see right here from from work rules. It's talking about finding the very best people um, who will be successful in the context of your organization. So that's just talking about you know you need the right fit um, and. They're, they have to, when you hire them, you, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, are they in some way, shape, or form better than me? And will they come in and make everybody around them more successful? Mm -hmm. um, so now the four-step guide. So the four-step guide is from the, from the Who book and You've got the steps right here, the scorecard, um, sourcing, which is sourcing is just having, um, having people, high quality people ready basically so that whenever you need them, um, you have them at your disposal. Selecting, that's gonna talk about the interview process and then selling, it's talking about when you have the right person how do you make sure that you don't lose them to the competition? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you use this with every single person you hire, correct? From not only sort of back office, if you will, but sort of the front of house too, kind of across the entire business? Yeah, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so this is like, uh, this is the reference. It's, yeah. it's uh, what people come, when, anybody that, inter that, that interviews for our company, they use this to learn and then we have a different code of doc that has like the different sections like um candidates ready to mm -hmm. like for ready for a first interview candidates yeah. ready for a second interview mm -hmm. um and so everybody that we hire um goes through the process goes through the interviews that we'll talk about here yeah um in a second and they either end up on the don't hire and there's a very clear specific reason why or do hire. And again, it talks about why. Um, and that code of doc is really helpful. 
as well because you, you, you learn a lot from the people you know that you don't hire as well as the people that you do hire yeah um, so awesome. yeah absolutely so the scorecard right here oh boy <laughs> Perfect. So this just says, hey, why are you hiring the person, right? What are you hiring the person for and what do they need to um, to succeed or what, what do they need to accomplish? Mm -hmm. um, and so this is the scorecard is a piece of paper, a sheet um, that you just fill out for. As you can see, step one is, is saying, what's the role's mission? Step two, what do they have to accomplish? List three, are there any required competencies? Let's go ahead and add them there. And then step four, um, oh, this is step three. So the fourth one, so once you have that scorecard, right, you fill it out with steps mm -hmm. one, step two, step three. Um, that, that you know who you're looking for, you know what they need to have, um, you know what to look for in resumes, you know what to look for when you're interviewing them. Mm -hmm. um, so, that is the very first piece. Know what you're looking for, because if you don't know, how are you going to hire the right person? Yeah, and also I think okay. a great way for like if, for you to make it really clear what you are looking for as the business owner, right? It's not up to your employees to guess or think, you know, sort of muddle through. But you're able to go, all right, everybody, we're looking for a new team member. This is exactly what we want. And then allowing everybody to be really clear on what does that mean? What do they need to do? Because it's so easy in interviewing to go like, yeah, this person seems nice, but to really kind of make it so that you can standardize from the very top and make it so that you don't have to be in the room every single time because you've been super clear from the beginning. I love that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and so number two is, is to source. The majority of companies and even us, like we just used to post positions when we need people, when somebody quit, we would post a job and then, you know, spend two or three weeks, four weeks, um, calling the people that apply. And then mm -hmm. from those people that apply during those, that, that four week window, we would pick one. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that wasn't the best way of doing things, obviously. <laughs> um, so, because you're like, okay, in this four-week window, what are the chances of somebody um, great applying for our position? It's it's mm -hmm. not high. So, yeah. so to rethink how you source for people or how you look for people, um, it's right here. So number one, you always have to be looking for talent, always. So you're mm -hmm. asking people that you know, your professional, your personal network, um, always let, you know, making sure that they know that, hey, I have a company and I need this kind of person and we are growing and we always need great people. If anybody ever, you know, if you know anybody, I'll please, please recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see right there, 77% of industry leaders without any prompting from us, us being um, the, uh, the team that interviewed the CEOs, um, cited referrals as their top technique for generating a flow of the right candidates for their business. Yet wow. among average managers, yeah, it's the least often practice uh, approach to sourcing. Mm -hmm. So. You being you looking for talent and always that that that's that's really really um, important. Yeah, I also love that you know this in house referrals is is like you're making it also everybody's job, right? It's not just me, Victor. I gotta hustle to get people in the door, right? It's you're you're making not only are you making uh, a statement about the type of people you want to hire and the type of skills you're looking for, but you're also saying, hey, everybody, this is ours. We're all creating this together. We're all sourcing. We're all part of it. And kind of creates a little bit more ownership across the board, which I think is you know, so powerful for a business of any size, but particularly you know, a small business that's growing very quickly, like yours. Yeah, and absolutely. You can see right there the in-house referrals. Mm -hmm. So our, after you create the scorecard, our people know 
who we're looking for. Yeah. And so now when they're out in their daily lives, like they're in the back of their head somewhere, you know, it's like the thought that, hey, this is, you know, this is the type of person that, that we're trying to hire. And so when they're just interacting, I mean, now not so much, but before even going to the grocery store and seeing an exceptional <laughs> cashier, right? Like just you, you recognize that and you say, hey, this is who we're looking for. And then just leaving leaving a card and saying, hey, mm -hmm. get in touch with us. We're looking for, you know, for people like you. Um, and our last five or six hires have all been um, referrals. Uh, and that's, that. that's really, it has, that's, that's been really great. If you've got um, a bigger organization or if you have the capital, their second tip is to hire an external recruiter. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't do too much of that. <laughs> um, our third way to source for people uh, whenever we're out in the community or whenever we used to go out into the community, um, we would go out to events um, and even just at, at any kind of event, whether it's like a charity and, and uh, giving back or where we're out selling, um, where we always have something that says, you know, we're looking for great people. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested, um, you know, reach out or communicate with us. Um, customers, customers are, are also a fantastic way to, you know, to, to, to get referrals and to, to get mm -hmm. a better, a better candidate than simply posting the position. Right. Uh, and I also like that it just, it's much more active, right? You're not just hoping and praying that the right person, like you said, in, in these four weeks, the right person shows up, but that you're actively seeking out and, and looking for those behaviors that you outlined in the scorecard, you're like, oh yeah, if I am having a really great interaction with somebody and they're, you know, friendly and kind and like really helpful when I'm at a store, hey, of course I want to make it clear, like, you know what, let's actually talk. Maybe this is a good thing for us to do, that you're, you're kind of taking control of the cycle, right? It's not just, okay, now we got to do it, but that you're really getting ahead of it so that you can have that advantage, which is super powerful. And that you have that same rigor from, hey, we wanna hire somebody who is, you know, gonna be working, you know, front of house in one of our stores as a cashier, all the way up to, you know, somebody who's working with me more at that executive level and that ownership level. You're using the same, the same level of rigor, the same level of care for your business and your people, which I absolutely love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and as you as we all know, everybody that hires, like it it sometimes takes time to bring yeah. in the right candidate or to bring in so maybe you know, hey, this person is a great fit for us. They would be amazing, but the timing for them to make the switch might mm -hmm. not be right now. Um you <laughs> what you're doing with, with when you source um all the time is that you're basically you know, you're like a reminder that's saying, hey, mm -hmm. if at some point in the future you you decide that it's time for a change, like we're we're here, give us a call. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the transition isn't always as fast as you want it to be. But if you, you have a network or you have a list of 15, 20 candidates that you know, hey, these people, if we bring them on, they're going to do a great job. Yeah. Um, one of them is, is bound to, is bound to come sooner or later. Totally, yeah. That's a lot better than than the, the four week. Please, we need after. somebody because I'm doing all the things. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. That's just gonna create the cycle of death. For okay. sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Select. So. The sourcing was step two, and that's just always having a pipeline. Um, mm -hmm. of people. So once you do want step one and two, step two is something that, that is constantly being done. And then three, um, as I mentioned, are, are the interviews. Yeah. Uh, so before it would be, hey, I just had a great interview. This guy's gonna take us to the next level. Um, he's great. 
And then the question, you know, how long, how long did you interview him for? And they'd be like, uh, 15 minutes. What'd you guys talk about? Um, so, so, soccer. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. So that's kind of how it went, right? We, we, the interview was like, a, do I like this, this person? Am I mm. going to get along? That was the interview process. Um, and so it was very, very, very subjective. Um, and that's yeah. part of the reason why it was uh, kind of a train wreck. Um, but <laughs> yeah, now getting into something that's a lot more um, uniformed in structure, you can see right there, there's four interviews. Um, for us, we, um, so the first interview is the screening interview. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over them. We, yeah. I'll try not to go too deep into them because there's a lot to each one. Um, sure. But the screen interview is a, it's like a 10 minute either call or 10 minutes like in person inter interview. Um, and you're just basically seeing, hey, is this person going to make, um, is this person someone who we need to spend more time with? Sure. Um, and so, the questions for the screening interview is, why do you want to work here? What are your career goals? And so we want the career goals to in some way, shape or form, or ideally to really align with the scorecard, right? Mm -hmm. So this, the goal in the scorecard is X. We want this answer to be X as well, or as close as it to, um, as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then same thing with number three, what are you really good at professionally? We need that, <laughs> what you're really good at professionally to align with the outcomes of the scorecard. Right. So everything just goes back to the scorecard. Yeah. Um, and if there's an alignment, then they move on to, to, to the second interview. And if there isn't an alignment, you know, then you might want to either figure out a different position or mm -hmm. if, you know, because they might not be a good fit for that role, but they might be for a different one. Um, so that yeah. is the, yeah, this, this, so question four, what are you not so good at doing professionally? And a lot of people don't like to give an answer to that one, but mm -hmm. there's some part of every job that you just don't like doing. And yeah, we're not perfect. It's okay. Right, it's, it's okay. Close, but. <laughs> it's okay to share it. Yeah. Um, and then the final one is just talking about, uh, you know, the, the previous two bosses and how they would rate you on a mm. scale of one to ten. Um, so, so that's asking, you know, the, the candidate to think from their boss's standpoint of view, not just their standpoint of view. Yeah. Um, and so down here, we just have like what a good answer looks like, what an okay answer looks mm -hmm. like, what a bad answer looks like. Um, because interview interviewing like anything takes takes a while to get good at it takes a while mm -hmm. to know what you're looking for and so we try to, to help our our interviewers yeah um, so well and like you said when you're interviewing it's so easy to get caught up in like oh I just like this person yeah you know, they they seem fun they seem easy to be around or you know they're like me right this person's just like me so of course let's just hire them. And sometimes that ends up clouding yep. our judgment and we don't see potential red flags or issues, or we end up having a lot of bias coming into our hiring. So by having this fully documented, it helps people. And I love that you're including like, here's a good answer, an okay answer and a bad answer and like why you're doing it and having it all come back to that scorecard just helps everybody be able to be more successful and more confident and also really helps protect your business from those biases creeping in, which I think is absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if everything goes well in the first interview, then you move on to the second interview, which is mm -hmm. a long interview. Um, and in this one, uh, we're just trying to collect as you can see right there, um, <laughs> <data. laughs> you know, we we can't be like Harry and say I just got a good feeling about this one and <laughs> let him in, <laughs> let him on the bus. Awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. so in this one, here's a great reminder, right? For mm. for every hour that we spend deciding who to who to hire, we'll save hundreds of hours not dealing with 
the wrong totally. the wrong candidate, the wrong player. Um, yeah. So for the who interview, we're just looking at their previous. Um, we can go back as far as uh, and the same the same five questions about each job. Um, mm -hmm. and they're extremely simple questions. Um, what were you hired to do? What accomplishments were you most proud of? So right there with those two, like we need to make sure that the accomplishments that they were most proud of are the things that they were hired to do. Um, ah. And not just something that they liked doing or a side project or something that has nothing to do with the job. Mm -hmm. um, same thing again, it talks about the low points in the job. Um, that just kind of helps us see, uh, you know, what what didn't they like? You know, everybody has lows. Um, yeah. We just like talking about it and, and, and knowing what happened there. Number four, the people that, you know, who did you work with, like specifically? Um, and so this fourth question is really important because we actually write down the people that they worked with. Um, and we, the majority of the time, try to get um, like either their email or their phone number for like, people that they worked with. Yeah. Um, at least we get three or four people from every job. Um, and so we use that information to then later do the reference interview mm -hmm. um, so that they don't get to pick the references, that it's more of a, you know, we get to pick out of the 15 or 20 people that they, they mentioned that they worked with. Yeah. Um, and so right, yeah. So then the last one is just, why did you leave that job? Or, you know, usually a very, very um, important question because mm -hmm. great people leave leave jobs when they're pulled from the job or they get, you know, somebody else calls them for a promotion or their old boss calls them and says, hey, I have a perfect opening for you. Yeah. Um, and not A players, they are usually, you know, like pushed out. And so the way the way that they that they talk about how they left it it's usually one of those two and we just kind of have to mm -hmm. get curious and say you know tell me more explain a little bit more to sort of see if it was a push or a pull yeah um, and also helpful for you from a i would imagine from a retention standpoint too right like if you know that this person um, you know, when this type of opportunity no longer existed for them, they looked elsewhere. That lets you know, like, oh, for this person, if we're going to mat, if this person's manager comes in, we need to know, like, this person is really driven by X, Y, and Z, um, and also just kind of helping you learn. I would imagine that would be part of it too. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. So that's the the who interview. Mm -hmm. um, so if they get past that one, so this one is usually for um, the, the third interview is usually for positions that require um, like a very specific skill set. Sure. Because the focused interview is just basically um, trying to dive into the specifics about a certain um, about the about the position, just mm -hmm. trying to make sure that you actually do have the right competencies. Yep. Um, so we don't use the focused interview uh, a whole a whole lot. Uh, but if you have a company that uh, where the the, the competencies are, are really important and mm -hmm. them knowing certain types of software or, or, or coding languages right. is really important, this is something you, you for sure want to want to have and address. Yeah, because it's like, oh, there's if, if we hire you, there's things we're going to train you on as far as our process. We can't judge you on not knowing our process. But if we need you to be bringing something in particular based on those outcomes from the scorecard, I would imagine that's where this focused inter interview becomes really, really critical to double check. Aren't we going to get what we're looking for? Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, so like we haven't had to hire an outside um, ice cream, like a manufacturing mm -hmm. um, individual. But if we did, like if we got to the point to where, hey, we, we, we 
can't possibly train somebody else in the short amount of time and our demand just blew up, we might need to hire somebody with experience, yeah. you know, making ice cream. And so at that point, you would probably would have a focused interview just to make sure that, hey, you do know how to use the equipment, you do know, <laughs> yes. um, you know, the processes, right? That's that. This is because if you, if you notice the other two or three, uh, the other two interviews, they don't really talk about like the specifics of the job. So this mm -hmm. is this is the one where you dive into, hey, you know how to use the machine, like yeah. let's 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 use it. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. And then the final one is just the reference. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have you have to do a reference. It's so easy to skip it. It's so mm -hmm. easy to say we've already done two three interviews. We spent so much time. Um, they did great on everything. Um, why not just hire them? Mm -hmm. Well, you you really have to do the the, the reference. Um, and here's the the guide right here for the reference, the mm -hmm. questions that we ask, um, the references. And as far as references go, we usually ask somebody. We call somebody that's their peer, their boss. And then um, if they had anybody below them, like uh, somebody below them as well. Yeah. Usually if, if, if they're, they were in any type of supervisor role or if they had people working beneath them, usually you get the really good stuff from the people that work beneath them. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to the, the boss or the peers. Yeah, well in particular, if you're trying to know like what is this person gonna be like to work with? Right. If the, if you find out like this person's only good for the people above them, but they're an absolute terror for the people below them, you want to know that, right? And and again, like I like how you keep bringing up this idea of the time that you spend in these interviews is worth it because you're not going to be surprised by things in the same way that you would before, and you know that you're going to bring that, that you're taking care of like the person you're going to bring in to your business, which is your baby, right? This is this is the thing you own. It's It's been part of your family. And you know that you wanna bring in the right person who's not gonna cause problems, who's not gonna cause delays, who's not gonna cause surprises, who's gonna let you be able to trust that it's gonna run smoothly and then we're all gonna get better from it too, right? We don't just wanna be passing and doing the thing we've always done. We also wanna get better, that creativity that you mentioned. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. You want to uh, take us to the sell section because I love that. I love that idea of like, how do you then? Great, we've got this person, but how do we sell them on that too? Yeah, just like making sure that they come to work for you and that you don't um, <laughs> you don't lose them at the last minute. Right, After right. All of that time that you spent making mm -hmm. sure they're the right one, they they're gone. So yep. <laughs> like, no, come um, back. <laughs> Yeah. So basically, it's it's really important once you have them, or once you know that you want them to have a, a lot of, of of contact and communication with them after you give them the offer letter, um, that you're checking up on them to make sure that they don't um, that if they do decide to go elsewhere, they at least try to the <laughs> to come back and say, hey, I'm I'm leaving or I'm going somewhere else because of this, or mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking about taking a different. A different position and here's why at least there you do lose them but you 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 at least get some information as to what yeah. you can do better you learn from that too right like oh clearly we didn't sell enough on this aspect let's get better at that yeah right 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 so mm -hmm. the five ways to seal the deal so fit if you know they're a good fit you want to reinforce that Right, they're not just coming in to work for some company, or they're not just taking X role. Like you're, you're let you're you're really pushing, and you're saying, "Hey, you're a great fit with us for this reason." Um, mm -hmm. And they know that by going through the interview, you know, the interview process, the extensive lengthy interview process, they know they're a good fit. And you just want to mm -hmm. basically remind them um, yeah. to the family. Um, Obviously, the family is going to be affected. <laughs> it's going to be affected yeah. if they take if they take the job or not. Um, and addressing the family, you know, if 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 they have to move because mm -hmm. of the job, 
sometimes the family may be the reason why they don't take the job and they don't right. move. We don't have that because we typically just hire people um, that are that are local. Um, but mm -hmm. we also have to make you know sure that 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 the family, um, at least just talking with the family, meeting them, yeah. greeting them, um, yeah. saying, uh, addressing the family. Don't forget the family. Three. For sure, you know, because like like you said, you've got you've got a, a little kid, and then one on the way. Like if you're hiring somebody who's a parent, like being able to really make sure that the job fits in with their responsibilities as a parent, that you care about them as a person beyond just, you're gonna show up and work for me, but I also uh, I also care about you and like your work-life balance. Like the, just that effort and gesture can mean so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Um, three, freedom, like we're not gonna micromanage you and we need <laughs> to make sure that they know that. Um, yeah. There are successful companies that do micromanage and there are successful companies that don't. Um, but for us, we feel like the best way to do it is just to say, hey, here's the outcome and then trust people until, you know, that trust is um, mm -hmm. is broken. Hopefully it never is, <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's the philosophy there. Mm -hmm. um, and then fourth, we try to have some sort of like a, like a, commission to every everybody that works here so we're like if the team if the company or if the location hits a certain goal like yeah. everybody receives a little commission and so the number four is, is you know fortune the money it's just saying hey if you come in and you help us accomplish these objectives um this is what your compensation is going to look it's going to look like over the next five years um and this is how you're going to grow with the company yeah um so that for me is really important because we want people that aren't just going to take a job, but we want people that have like a drive to to want to be better and a drive mm -hmm. to to want to move up because that's that's honestly the, the the position that our company is in right now, right. and we need people to grow with with us. Um, and so those are mainly the people that we try to go after. Yeah. And then finally, just making sure that they know it's you know it's going to be fun. We're going to, I mean, sell ice cream. So yeah. here, <laughs> better be fun. <laughs> ice cream, at, you know, the minimum. So <laughs> there's th that helps sell the family. <laughs> but ooh yeah, oh I hadn't even thought about that. Free ice cream. <laughs> it's, it's a small. It, it's a. <laughs> I got to move to Texas. Is what I am hearing. <laughs> there you go. So that's the selling portion. Um, perfect. Cool. So then my favorite part of the doc is the tips and more, which yeah. is sort of sort of things that help you like as you're doing the interviews, as you're sourcing, as you're filling out the scorecard, like these are um, tips that basically help you make better decisions or that help you. Um, stay on your feet. So the hitting the gong fast is really good because basically what it's saying is that sometimes when we see a red flag or when we um, notice something in a candidate that's a little off, we don't pay enough attention to it. Mm. And so the hitting the gong fast is just saying, hey, if you're not 100% sure about the individual, hit the gong, don't hire move on to the next one. Yeah, because again, like you're spending a ton of time in the interview process. And so you wanna make sure that that time is well spent. So as soon as that time becomes not well spent, it's like, all right, because we take this seriously, we gotta take our time seriously too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, so there's a lot of, there are eight here hints and, mm -hmm. and just overall tips for when you're, when you're hiring, when you're going through the process that basically make it um, that, that 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 help you. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll so, go into one more. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I want to know which one. I'm like bated breath. Let me know which other one, other tip that you love. Oh yes. Yeah, the getting curious, and this one's just asking the right questions. It says, mm -hmm. "What, how, and tell me more." 
Yeah. So as you can see here with the initial one, um, when somebody says, I'm conflict avoidant, you ask, you know, how so? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, I guess I avoid situations where people are going to get upset. And then you mm -hmm. go back to what, right? And you say, what's an example of that? Um, and they give you an example. The example is, is really, really important throughout the whole process, mm -hmm. like asking for actual examples, not totally. hypothetical. Um, mm -hmm. So then they give their answer and you're back to, okay, well, how did you deal with it? Mm -hmm. and, and you could go on for a very, very long Forever. time. <laughs> yeah, just asking how so, what's an example, you know, what happened, tell me mm -hmm. more. And so that's just part of the, the, the digging and just trying to fully, yeah. fully understand the situation. Um, and if I remember correctly, if I'm remembering back to the other sections in your doc, you actually remind about getting curious at several points. I feel like I saw that um, in like the different interview section areas. Like this is something that seems very clearly part of like your business's DNA with how you do this. Yeah, there's there's multiple links throughout the throughout <laughs> the sections that take you to this page and that say, hey, when you ask somebody what they don't like about their job. And they say, uh, well, it was a good time. Everything was, everything went great. Mm -hmm. That you don't just let them get away with that answer that you get curious and you say, okay, but what, was there something maybe that, you mm -hmm. know, at one point in time that you didn't like or that you just weren't a fan of? I'm not saying you didn't do it, but you just, mm -hmm. you know, didn't really like. Um, so, the, the, the getting curious and asking kind of the, yeah. you know, the uncomfortable question to really dig in to see what um, what the candidate didn't like yeah. um, or what they did like or, you know, how they handled different situations is, is definitely a skill. Totally. I also feel like this would be a really great thing if you're ever at a, like an event where you have to network with people and you're like, ah, oh, what do I say? <laughs> Sure, sure. This. Just get curious. <laughs> so Victor, I'd like go. to know, um, so this doc, which is, uh, you're right, it's just got everything in it. And I love that it is your brain and how you think about hiring for your business, all documented. How do you use this doc with your team? Like, is this something you send out to people? Um, what does that look like? So this doc, as I mentioned, is a, is like, uh, how do I say it? It's like the, the who book distilled into mm -hmm. a Coda doc. And so yeah. when the, the hiring managers or when the hiring super, when the supervisor that's about to do an interview, they open up the individual candidates page mm -hmm. um, and they see, okay, with this candidate, I'm about to do the screening interview. So there's a link that says, hey, if, been done a screening interview in a while or you need a refresher click on the link and nice. so they click on it and shoots them over to the to the screening interview right Ooh. and so before they do the interview they get to revisit the doc and they get to see okay these are the, the questions i'm asking um this is what i'm looking for this is what i'm trying to avoid um i have to remember to hit the gong fast if they're not a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, I have to remember to get curious. Yeah. So it's just, it's a refresher because all of us forget. All of us, totally. You know, we're in we're in the in, in in a rush or in the middle of the day, and we have to do an interview. It's very easy to say, you know, let's just let's just get this over with. Mm -hmm. um, and so this doc serves as a constant, continuous reminder that says, hey. This is the most important thing of your mm -hmm. day. Know what you're, what, what, you know, what the interview is going to be like. Know what you're looking for. Know what's yeah. what. Well, and I like that you've got like the interviews are all tracked in a Coda doc. So you've got your candidates, and then you also have put the links to this doc in there, so that no matter where people are, they don't have to go like, oh, where's that awesome doc that Victor put together? The other thing that I'm I'm really realizing is by having this all documented. 
um, you know, I, I could see a world where when someone is hired, you do a presentation or someone does a presentation on your hiring methodology, right? Which is more time that you're taking, but this kind of allows you to scale scale that training too, because you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to make sure that this person's about to do an interview. So we have to, you know, send out the thing that it's all just kind of built in and part of the documented process. So it doesn't require you to intervene. And it also doesn't require someone to like, oh, I got to read this whole book. It's like, okay, no, I'm just doing a screening interview today. This is what I really need to get, get really clear on. I love how, how that efficiency that you built in there for your people. That's really cool. Yeah. That that's key because like you said, if you give somebody a book and you say, Hey, this is our hiring philosophy. <laughs> you know, good luck. <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're able to make it easy for them and, and yeah. to have pinpoint the one page or the one section that they need mm -hmm. today. Right. It's you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's you. Totally. Awesome. Um, what else about uh, this stock or this process? Um, do you have sort of advice for people or other things you find interesting or things you've discovered in working with this? Um, I would probably that I find interesting about Coda I think so about two years ago, we is when I discovered Coda more or less. Um, and it was a very slow transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and we still have PowerPoint docs. We still have Word docs. Um, but what was most useful for me or, or what I found most appealing about Coda is that it's you have basically a canvas, like an open canvas. And it's a very robust tool, um, but it's also something that can be extremely, extremely simple. Um, mm -hmm. Joel's Joel's interview that you, or you know, when, when Joel talked about his impossible list, like yeah. his is so it's so simple, it's so easy, um, yet it can be so transformative. And you don't you don't have to like make a multi layered, you know, enormous doc anything that helps you accomplish what you want to accomplish or anything that helps make your life a little bit easier or a little bit less um, stressful. Like that's what Coda does. It, it just makes things better. It makes things easier. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, no, no problem. I'm getting all choked up about it. I, mm -hmm. I like how you talk about that. It, it, it just, it's one of those things where if it solves your problem, then that's that's enough you know like in this case it's like this this solves my problem if it's just one list it solves my problem in this case here you've taken it and you're it's you know really just wonderful document right there's not a bunch of crazy databases happening in this doc that you're working on but it solves your problem and it does it really elegantly and so to not uh, discount your own creativity I, I think that it's like you know what this is something i made it's doing the thing i needed to do that means it's awesome. I mean, uh, I love that you're, you're you're really bringing up that it's about you and your perspective, which I think is super cool. Um, since we are getting close to the end of time, um, Victor, is there anything that you want to plug or uh, make sure people are aware of as far as things that are happening in your business where they can learn more about you? Um, I'll go ahead and grab your, uh, your company website and put it over into chat too. Yeah, absolutely. So as we mentioned, we sell Mexican treats. So if you or anybody you know, um is looking for some mexican treats or is looking to spice things up a little bit um we're we're here for you um the website's there um <laughs> that we uh we haven't gotten into shipping frozen goods yet but we're testing it out and that along with our new location is what's what's exciting right now is what's uh taking up my time Nice. Um, and of course, like we want, we want to hear from you. If there's anything that you, <laughs> anything that, 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 that comes to mind, um, please reach out where I'm, I'm always happy to, to meet new people and to, to learn different perspectives. Nice. Um, but thank you all so much for, for listening. Thank you, Maria, for inviting me. This was oh, a lot for of sure. 
Yeah. And thank you, Victor, because, you know, honestly, these, whenever I get to do these, it's the best part of my day because I love just talking with people who are solving problems, who are doing interesting things with their businesses, and who are ultimately making the world a better place. So it's been a total pleasure chatting with you. Definitely, everybody, check out Victor's website. I put it over there into chat. Um, and Victor, I am wishing you all the best as you're getting ready to open up that fourth location. And I am waiting with bated breath to when you can ship frozen treats my way because I know we're gonna have some heat waves this summer and I could definitely use some nice tasty ice creams. All right, everybody, well, have a great rest of your day. You can go ahead and, and snag Victor's doc over there in chat, as well as check out the, I put the fear setting template over there too, Victor, uh, the first there doc that you discovered. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, thank yeah. you so much, Victor. Have a great rest of your week and uh, we'll see you all in the next session. All right, bye, Victor. <laughs>